Today we're going to be adding some Cat6 Ethernet lines into the office as well as the living room. And the reason why I want to add some lines in the office primarily is because the gaming computer as well as the Mac Mini share a 1 gig connection uh, to the switch back to the network closet. And I want to have the Mac Mini have a dedicated 10 gigabit line back to the network closet and then 1 gigabit for the truncator. So that way I can actually use my 10 gig switch which normally if I want to have a 10 gig connection, I have to unplug and replug some of the cables around uh, just so I can have the full bandwidth capability there. Alternatively, I guess I could buy a 10 gig switch, but they are very expensive and also um, they're not PoE, I guess, so I'd have to like have additional power cables and all that, and I just don't want to. And that was one of the reasons why I went with this USW Flex Mini, because it's powered over ethernet, which is nice. I don't need any additional power cables and also, well, it's gigabit. So it's perfectly fine for my needs, but we're not gonna be doing that anymore. No more Band-Aid solutions. We'll be adding the ethernet lines and everything will be hunky-dory. And that's also somewhat the case for the living room. So the goal there is to have the UAC Pro wireless access point have its own connection back to the network closet for PoE. And then also the Apple 4K TV will be off of Wi-Fi now and will have its own dedicated ethernet. And then I'll have a third option just for whatever reason, whatever I might want. Honestly, I got three because they don't sell four and what Home Depot, they don't sell four and I was going to get two, but I didn't see the point of having two lines and I might as well want one extra just in case for something in the future, but whatever. So we'll be doing all of that today and uh, let's quickly take a look around and see what we got going on. All right, so here's the desk. This is where I do all my editing and gaming and underneath here is currently a mess of cables because I just added the Mac mini to um, the desk here and I need to clean up which we'll be doing also today. I don't know if I'll show you guys that. Anyway, so uh, this is where I get an ethernet connection uh, from the network closet. And there's a bunch of network cables dangling all over the place. Oh, actually that one's not even plugged in. Uh, this is my test connection, essentially, that I run to the other side of the room uh, when I'm doing builds. And then I've just got like cables all over the place. And normally that switch sits underneath the desk, um, like right about here where all these cables plug into, and that's been great for me for a long time, but it's getting kind of annoying now because when I want to use the 10 gig switch, I have to unplug the connection in the network closet and then plug that into a different switch just so I can get 10 gig networking or else I'd be waiting forever to pull down uh, files from the server or when I'm uploading files to the server. And it's I'm just at the point now where that's just not gonna work anymore and I'd like to have something a little bit more elegant and also cost effective. And that's why we'll be running the ethernet cable uh, here. Now, the scenario with the living room is a little bit different. So I'm not really gonna be able to show you much in the living room, um, but back here, there's a whole bunch of stuff like this UPS. Uh, there is an Apple 4K TV up there. And then normally my wireless access point, access point is here, but I like having my Apple 4K TV on ethernet and my uh, access point also having PoE. And that's just not possible because I only have one connection back there, one ethernet connection. And so we're gonna be adding a couple more there, um, primarily just to make things easier on myself. And because we bought 500 feet of Cat6 cable, which was the minimum I could find to buy, that was available in stock, that is. And so, since I'm gonna have so much excess cable, I might as well just add more lines, right? Makes sense to me. And finally, the last thing we're gonna do is clean this entire mess up here because I just have cables all over the place for when I've been switching uh, to 10 gig networking, to well, there should be an, oh yeah, but when I've been switching to single gig networking, and then also when I've been switching to be outside of my subnet uh, to just using the router, and that's because I also help people with their unraid setups occasionally. Uh, so anyway, we have to clean this up. And as per usual, there'll be links in the video description for the cable and also ethernet jacks and keystones that you could use at home uh, if you are trying to do a similar project or are using this video to get ideas uh, for your own home projects. So let's go ahead and get up in the attic because we need to do a little bit of drilling. Now we're gonna need some supplies in order to help us out. First most important one being safety glasses. The next being a light. So I've done a video in the past where I'm also open the attic running network cables and all that jazz. So you guys should check it out if you have a chance because that one's kind of interesting too. So I think it goes pretty much without saying but I'm gonna have to use this outlet here in order to run my light a lot closer to the work area, the place I plan on working. Uh, so that way it'll be a lot easier to see what I'm doing because 
like most attics are pretty dark and they don't install lights anywhere else except for where you come up to the attic where your um, AC unit is. So here we are above the network closet. All the network cables go into this tiny little hole and as you can tell it's already pretty full in there. Um, it'd be hard to squeeze through six more cables, wait four more cables uh, through there. Uh, it was already pretty tight in the last video that we did. So what we're going to have to do is actually drill another hole just off to the left of this that's a about the same width as that hole so that way we can run more network cables through here with ease so this is a one inch bit and we're going to drill right through here and hopefully that is about perfect there must be another piece of wood where i initially started drilling um, and i managed to make a hole through the wood right there so we're going to be off to the right instead of the left not a big deal but i would have liked to not have drilled so many holes through all of this wood uh, so, whatever, at least we figured it out early enough uh, before we kept drilling down into the abyss and just constantly threw all that wood. Alright, so we have a bit of a problem. Um, that is where the network cable and coax line go into the office. And what's interesting about the coax line and Ethernet cable there is they're stretched all the way tight. And there is no way I'm going to get two more cables down in there. Uh, in fact, it looks like, or I'm sorry, in fact, I tried sticking a drill bit through that hole and it didn't go. It is totally blo blocked. So we're going to have to drill um, basically to the right of that so we can get some cables down in there. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. All right, and there we go. We drilled a hole right next to where those go. So we'll be able to easily fish some cables right through there. And, uh, or we're going to fish them up from here. And I don't know, we'll be good to go, I think. I'm up here fishing for some Cat6 cable. Gonna get some data, then do some Netflix and chill. In theory, we should just be able to grab the fish tape from here. And we'll be good to go. Okay, uh, well, I can't find it. So all that means is I have to go back up in the attic and try again. All right, so we finally fished our cable runner through right here. So now I should be able to uh, tape my Cat6 Ethernet to that and yank it up. And we'll be pretty close to being done with this office. There are about a million different ways to get cable up through the wall. Uh, I personally like to make sure that I get tape around each of the cables individually and then around the entire fish tape uh, so that way I know that it's not going to pop off due to, you know, past experience fishing for cables. Not gonna lie, I wasn't going to include this part where I'm actually pulling the cable up through the wall, but I felt like it'd be pretty neat to see because, uh, you know, sometimes you just don't know what it looks like. All right, I went ahead and pulled a bunch of extra slack up here because we got to walk the cables all the way from this room all the way to the top of the network closet. And then once we're at the top of the network closet, I'll fish these down into the closet itself. And then, of course, we'll just pull down the excess that we need, making sure we leave just enough extra slack so we can cut additional cables in the future, uh, just in case we make mistakes or want to make adjustments or really any, any reason you can think of. Uh, it's just nice to have the excess cable, uh, especially for the next guy. And normally I would do this, I would start with the um, rack side first, just to make sure I have plenty of excess and then pull whatever excess is uh, from the uh, network closet into here that way I know I have plenty just in case I make mistakes uh, but this time we're just going to wing it and I'm going to leave about maybe about that much whatever that is maybe about this much we'll be a little bit more safe we're going to leave that much slack that way we can make plenty of mistakes and that way we don't have to worry too much Ooh, that might actually not be enough <laughs> no I'm kidding that's gonna be fine it'll be plenty so we just have to be extra careful and make sure we do this right on the first couple of tries because any less than that and we're not going to have too much slack to work with. I do have more slack up above. I'm just not going to pull that down yet until I'm ready to uh, get things nice and tight or at least as tight as they can be. So um, let's get this thing keystoned. Let's get these keystoned and we should be good to go. Now one thing that's particularly nice about these keystones is is that they're easy to are relatively easy to pop in and back out. So, you know, we could reuse these and we don't have to recut them every time, uh, which is pretty important and something that you'll probably want if you do this at home. 
uh, so that way you're not always cutting cables. What's nice is that these keystones are pre-labeled, so there's an A and B side, and we're just gonna follow the A, B, I'm sorry, we're gonna follow the B side uh, configuration here, and we're gonna make sure that we do B on both ends, so that way um, we're not gonna have any issues with power or data. Now, it doesn't matter if you use A or B, um, I think the industry standard is B, so that's what we're gonna roll with uh, just in case. So not the best angle for you guys, but this is just a Klein tool uh, crimper and strimper. <laughs> crimper and stripper, not strimper. And this is what I basically use for all of my um, jobs now, a days or since the last time. So I leave just about an inch of excess on one side and then I just strip the jacket just a little cut like that, and just pull that right off, and we're pretty much good to go. So, assuming I do this right on my first try, I will not have to do this again. Um, I'm not gonna be able to actually show you guys how to make these cables, because I'm not gonna be able to operate the camera, have good lighting and all that stuff, uh, without doing a lot of work. So you'll just have to take my word for it, or look up a video on how to do this. So, sorry. I'm sorry I'm lame. Okay, so here in the server room, we just need to get these cables cut to length and then uh, get them installed into the patch panel. And once we get the cables added to the patch panel up here, what we'll do is probably end up reordering the entire thing to clean it up. So here's what it looks like when it's basically done. We will have to do some cable management, obviously, and clean this up a little bit. Um, and aside from where they cut the hole too wide, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I think if we had a plate with four on there, we it would cover up that small little gap that the uh, builder left behind for us when they covered up that with the original plate. Uh, but nonetheless, I think that turned out pretty good. And now we have um, additional ports as needed. So here I am above the fireplace. We're going to need to drill a hole just off to the right where the coax and ethernet cable are here, pass through our new lines, and then add those uh, to behind the TV. And we'll be pretty close to finishing up this project. So let's go ahead and do that. This time we'll be fishing the cables up from the server room and taking them all the way through the attic into the fireplace down to the TV. This is currently what the back of the TV looks like. Once we're done here, hopefully we can get the wireless access point added above it somewhere and uh, we'll be able to power it through ethernet. And I managed to actually very easily get the wires fished to this point and this is basically uh, what it looks like and we're gonna need to get these wired as kind of like I did before. This is what it looks like all said and done. I have my wireless access point mounted to the top of the wall now and everything's much more clean than it, uh, it was earlier before. Pretty cool. So this is basically the final product here. Um, as you can see I've moved everything to the right and I'm now using shorter cables so it definitely looks a lot more clean and all the excess cables that's here in the panel I actually just pushed up into the wall so I can clean that up better. And I've taken a page out of Craft Computing's playbook and all of the blue cables that you see are representative of power over ethernet or powered cables, except for this blue one on the left. And I went ahead and labeled everything so we know what it is. And I gotta say, it cleaned up pretty nicely. I'm really liking the way it looks with the white and blue cables from Ubiquiti. I need to get some more to really clean this up and finalize it. All right, it is the next morning and I'm gonna call this project complete because I've gone around and tested all of the different ports that we ran and all of them are working as desired. Working with keystones in the patch panel has made that incredibly easily. So thankfully I didn't make any mistakes and don't have to do any re-cabling or re-punching, punch downing or whatever. That's what you use this tool for, punch down. Anyway. Um, so I don't know when the next time we'll be in the attic is because I do plan on getting some more cameras in the future But if you do like seeing videos like this uh, Make sure to keep up with the channel and hopefully you'll be able to check that out when the time comes if it comes It'll come just not sure when anyway guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you all next time Oh shit